Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian. Since the start of this awful war with Russia on the territory of my beautiful and independent country Ukraine, I have decided I will vlog daily and retell you some real life stories that we consider important in my country, maybe answer some of your questions, so feel free to comment and ask them. And of course, clarify some facts from our history and cultural background. Uh, recently, I have recorded a video about our President Zelensky, who was a true discovery for many Ukrainians, including me. I was not the greatest of his supporters before the start of this war, and definitely I love and support him right now. And I have decided I will tell my attitudes to the war criminal who calls himself the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Of course, uh, I cannot tell you everything I feel because YouTube will ban this video, but perhaps I will focus your attention on some facts that we in Ukraine consider absurd and uh, this may be useful doc uh, arguments for those who doubt and still believe in the strength of Russia and its so-called president. Well, first of all, let's look at the time when he came to rule uh, at, in Russia. His uh, biography is uh, difficult to find, his true biography. We know he was a KGB agent and he had a very funny nickname, Moss. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly, so I explain this is a kind of an insect that likes to eat fur, woolen stuff and so on, and also very colorless. And I think it describes Vladimir Putin pretty well. And uh, he was always keeping this low profile. So even if you try to read something about his family, his uh, wife or wives, you won't find anything trustworthy. And for example, uh, when the, United, uh, the European Union and the US, it seems to me, wanted to sanction his daughters, it was pretty difficult to identify whether these women are really his daughters and how many daughters does he have and is Alina Kabayeva the mother of his children and many other facts. I think it's totally weird. Of course, many of us like to keep secrets, but for a president of any country, it's pretty difficult to keep a secret, especially during the presidential campaign. And I think it's normal because like, when you choose to become a president, you have to be ready that people will look very attentively at uh, you. So this is uh, something I cannot understand how Russians accept and they don't want to know the truth about him, their president, his life, maybe without details, but at least in general. We know that he was working on the territory of uh, Germany and perhaps built some useful contacts during his uh, stay, but later on uh, he returned back to Russia and started to build his political and business career. Also, we know that Putin is extremely rich. Maybe he's one of the richest persons on the planet and the true father of all oligarchs. Even those that we have in Ukraine, we had, I hope, in Ukraine, they were connected to Putin and to Russian traditions of so-called business. And one of the questions that we often see in the newspapers in Ukraine, and I personally like this question, why all of these poor Russian soldiers that loot on the territory of Ukraine, that are so surprised at the normal middle uh, class life in Ukraine, why don't they turn their tanks back, turn their missiles in the direction of Kremlin, and uh, why don't they try and liberate themselves from the Putin's regime? Because he is the one, he and his closest circle are the ones who actually make Russia a very poor country and Russian army too. So one thing that I totally as a Ukrainian do not understand is uh, that when President Yeltsin decided to resign due to his health, health problems, but also I believe he he used too much alcohol too because he was drunk on a couple of very serious occasions and then he decided to assign Putin as his successor and uh, I think you cannot assign successors it's no more uh, medieval ages it's no more uh, monarchy in Russia or something like that and you have to give people a choice and uh, Russians accepted that I cannot imagine a situation like uh, similar in Ukraine 
uh, of course during any election campaign you can have some manipulations populism and so on but still um, politicians must fight for people's attention and in case of Russia they simply treat Putin as Tsar and this is totally weird because it is a mixture of everything communism religion uh, Russian Empire traditions and chaos <clears throat> Another thing that uh, I see that many like Russian trolls who also comment my videos, they often say, but he is strong and uh, you say that you are winning and they have ruined your plane or they have ruined some of your cities. I do not uh, deny the fact that we have so many losses and so many mm, devastating things happening on the territory of Ukraine. It was not our choice. We were attacked and what we do right now, we stand for freedom, we stand for independence and we actually protect not only ourselves but everything normal in the world. Uh, but we definitely uh, win this war because we are stronger, we show better tactics, we have people and uh, nations that support us. And once again, we're fighting for truth. And I think it's totally wrong to equate strength and violence. Strength is what we demonstrate. Violence is what Putin's regime and his troops demonstrate on the territory of Ukraine, like that Bucha massacre. It's not the synonym to strength. Strength is something different. Strength is something Russian soldiers have long forgotten about. And this tolerant world perhaps uh, is hungry for strong leaders and they try to see they wanted to see Putin as one and many uh, liked him because he was this macho style and he was always talking about the strength of his army the strength of his country he was acting like a host of the whole part of the world and now we see it was all an illusion and he's afraid to meet Zelensky right he is uh, living somewhere in the bunker, nobody knows where exactly. And uh, he is uh, afraid of direct communication with people. Look at that long table that must protect him, perhaps not only from COVID, but also, I don't know, from stabbing him into his heart. He fired lots of doctors and uh, I think he can even die of hunger because he won't trust anyone who brings him food. These are all signs of paranoia and uh, definitely he suffers from one. And it all developed slowly. And when someone is a president for 22 years, something you cannot imagine in a normal civilized world, and perhaps we have these limits, we have these standard, standards, just not just because, but this is a way to protect a country from authoritarian regime, from dictatorship. And in Russia, they have him for 22 years. In Belarus, they have Lukashenko for 27 years. And uh, this is something not normal at all. And when I think, when you tell me there are normal Russians, I have a question to this normal Russians. How can you have someone as your president for 22 years and still believe it's okay? And uh, of course, now he does not demonstrate uh, his strengths, he demonstrates his paranoia. I know that lots of mistakes uh, during this uh, Russian military operation on the territory of my country are due to the fact that Putin wants to dictate what to do to his generals, because once again, as a true dictator, he believes he's a specialist in everything. He's a specialist in linguistics, he's a specialist in languages, in military, in economics, and it all it is all very similar to how Stalin saw himself, how Hitler saw himself. That's why mm, I'm really glad when I read the news and I see that more and more people understand that he is no more a politician, he is a total insane mm, war criminal and he must be treated like that. So we do not have to think what will Putin think in that condition. We have to realize he's uh, not the one to talk to. Uh, and um, for example, my uncle, he's an architect and he says the best idea, the best solution is to actually uh, close forever 
entrances to his with some construction materials i don't know what the english for them but but like concrete or something close the entrances to his bunker and that would be a solution for the whole world and i personally would like an online trans uh, online broadcast from that bunker after <laughs> it is closed so anyway uh, when we think about this true leadership and the image of a true leader uh, we have to understand it's not about someone who keeps his power for 22 years in a country that he still calls a democracy. It is not with the help of special services and we all know that he tries to kill, to poison his opponents and all the special services, KGB agents everywhere. And once again, his uh, rule is not the result of his um mind of his actions but just the result of total control and totalitarianism that is so much popular in russian society and even if i think about russia after putin i think they will reinvent a dictator i want to be wrong but i think that in a couple of decades they will reinvent another dictator because something is so far wrong in their political program in their minds or whatever Anyway, uh, I totally do not understand when someone still thinks of uh, Russia as uh, a really strong country and Putin as a strong uh, president, because uh, all of that is just a bubble that was ruined after his idea of three-day blitzkrieg on the territory of Ukraine failed. And I'm sure it opened the eyes to many European politicians because we've heard about them believing uh, that Ukraine has a couple of days or hours left as an independent state but then there are other things that's why we don't have to believe these images and for me honestly Putin starting from his style starting from the choice of his clothes and finishing with the way he speaks the way he walks uh, is a, a funny I cannot say funny because he's a maniac but um, I do not feel any kind of fear or respect towards him because it all looks pretty funny and those people who consider him the greatest leader of the greatest country also make me laugh. And um, I think that uh, I have come across this quote and I like it a lot that uh, we in 21st century fight with Putin who is still at the beginning of the 20th century and the past must fail and must fall and maybe sometime that will even bring liberation to the countries like belarus and russia thank you very much for your watching my videos thank you for your subscriptions we are approaching two kilobytes and i already think how can we celebrate that in our community please feel free to ask your questions and thank you for your support it's extremely important for us ukrainians to know that you are with us to know that you follow the events happening here and you support us the way you can and uh, your governments support us the way they can they can and we are very grateful for all that Slava Ukraini!